Today, I'll be presenting on HPV vaccination, first year college students' beliefs and attitudes. My name is Raluca Lassan and I'm a current RMD candidate. My advisors for this research were Dr. Joseph Fava and Dr. Steve Erickson. In terms of background on HPV, over 42 million Americans are currently infected with HPV types that cause disease, and about 13 million become infected each year. The CDC recommends either a two dose or three dose series depending on the age of initiation. And since the introduction of the vaccine, infections with these HPV types that can cause cancers and genital warts have dropped 88% in teenage girls. The vaccine provides protection against nine virus subtypes and is highly safe and effective. But despite all of this, only 42.7% of males and 45.3% of females aged 13 to 17 in Michigan have completed their HPV vaccine series. Our objectives were to, to determine the vaccination rates in a broader context of health beliefs and attitudes, social determinants of health, barriers, as well as individuals' backgrounds. In terms of methods, we surveyed first-year undergraduate students on the University of Michigan Ann Arbor and Wayne State University campuses. We used survey data that was collected through an anonymous Qualtrics survey with up to 50 questions depending on vaccination status. We collected a variety of information like HPV vaccination status, the age that they started, insurance coverage, as well as some demographic information and their vaccine related beliefs and attitudes, as well as barriers to access. Our analysis is descriptive to identify response trends. In terms of our demographics, um, we can see here there were a total of 99 total respondents, 76% were female, 98% were single and unmarried, 81% had private insurance. The rest of the information goes through ethnicity, religious affiliation, living situation, um, and current sexual activity. For our results on the left, that includes results from all of the survey respondents, which were 99. 89 of those had heard of HPV prior to our survey. And only 64 of the 99 were aware of some ways that HPV can be spread. Our results on the right focus on responses only from vaccinated um, individuals. We can see that 36 out of 67 started the HPV dose series at 13 to 17 years of age, and only three of them were 18 or older when they started with their first dose. 59 out of 67 had, to their knowledge, completed the series with two or more doses. These results, these two tables highlight background knowledge sources and recommendations from healthcare providers and their communication. On the left, we see um, how these respondents heard about HPV versus the vaccine. So we can see a slightly different spread of information with the virus. A lot of information came from parents, social media, and sex education classes in high school or college. But the vaccine, most information came from parents and healthcare providers. On the right, um, we asked who helped to recommend or decide to receive HPV vaccination, and 36%, um, the most common response that was that the decision was between healthcare provider and parents and did not include the survey respondent. Next, we asked them if they had received information about any vaccines from a provider, 86% said yes, and we asked them what form of communication, 70% was a discussion during an appointment, followed by 19% provided the written information um, from the doctor's office. We then asked the vaccinated respondents how important and how difficult it was to receive the HPV vaccine or vaccinations. Most said that it was very or moderately important to receive the vaccines, and most said that it was extremely easy or somewhat easy to receive them. Then we looked at the total cohort again and asked them how much they would be willing to pay out of pocket for one dose of the HPV vaccine. Most said they'd pay 10 to $20 or 20 to 30, um, and some said they'd pay nothing out of pocket. We then had to choose all that apply question to identify barriers to receiving the HPV vaccine. The most common response was an uncertainty about needing it, then a concern about side effects, a fear of needles, and concerns about efficacy. So in conclusion, um, students were informed of HPV versus the vaccine in a variety of ways. 20% were not sure how HPV can be spread, and this requires some further research about that educational gaps impact on their motivation to receive the vaccine. Limitations include recall bias about a vaccine series a few years ago and convenience sample bias. The most common barrier was the uncertainty regarding the need, so that is a great opportunity for educational improvement um, to improve and boost the vaccination rates. And most of the respondents, again, said that the decision to be vaccinated was made between their provider and their parents, so trying again to target education to caregivers. Thank you for your attention to our research project today.